Hey guys, so today we're going to be going over wiring up a dual voice coil sub. As an example out here today, I have an MTX Audio 12 inch jackhammer subwoofer. So the whole thing about a dual voice coil subwoofer is its flexibility. Now everyone, a lot of people think that it's louder just because it has two voice coils. It is, but not because it has two voice coils, it's because the two voice coils make it a much more flexible subwoofer in terms of wiring to extract the most amount of power out of your amplifier. So as you can see here, I have one set of terminals over here, and I have another set over here. So today I'm going to show you how to wire it up for different impedances to maximize the amount of power you extract from your amplifier. So today to show you what's going on, I'm going to be using my multimeter to show you what type of impedance I have each time I wire it up, and then just some wire to wire the two voice coils together. So I know this might still be a little bit confusing, so I'm going to try to simplify it some more. So I have two resistors here as an example. Both are 20 ohms each. I'm going to show you the difference between wiring things in parallel or in series. So the whole thing is the same thing as we've been doing, we're going to just change the impedance. So first I'm going to show you in parallel, it's going to actually cut it in half. So we're just going to twist them together, so you have both ends together. So now we're at 10 ohms. Now I'm going to show you just one resistor by itself. Now you're at 20. Now if you want to go up to 40, you run them in series, one after the other. Right around 40. So if you want to make your impedance higher on your subwoofer, run in series. If you want to step it down, run in parallel. Now the trick to make it easier on yourself is look at the specs of your amplifier and see if it needs to run at a 2 ohm or 4 ohm load to get maximum power. Then pick the sub appropriately after and wire it up. So today's video is just going to be done with one subwoofer to keep it simple, but you can carry the theory across multiple subwoofers to get whatever impedance you want. So to start off with, we're going to start doing this with a 2 ohm load. Now in this scenario, you have a monoblock amplifier that only has one speaker input, so you can't bridge it. So what you have to do is you have to lower the pins at the subwoofer itself to maximize the amount of power you want to get out of this amplifier. So you're going to run this, these uh, speaker terminals in parallel. So what I mean by parallel is you're going to hook up the positive to positive and the negative to negative. So start with one set of pair of wires and hook up to your positive and negative. Now keep in mind which is positive and negative that you're doing, so to keep it simple for me, I'm picking the side of the wire that has the writing on it. And then I'm going to do the same over on this side. I'm going to twist them together, writing to writing, uh, blank wire to blank wire. So just twist them together, put your terminal. There will be instruction manual in the box for your subwoofer. If you are, if you've bought a brand new one, so bear with me. The wire is a little bit thick. So now, this now your voice coils are wired up in parallel, and you're set up for a two ohm load. So take your multimeter. Hopefully, you guys can see that, and just test it. So now we're at 2 ohm load, so for a 2 ohm stable amplifier, we're going to get maximum power. So next I'm going to show you guys how to wire up for 8 ohms approximately. Um, you want to do, you want to wire up for a higher impedance if you're going to have multiple subwoofers that are going to step it down again, or your amplifier just isn't, you know, 2 ohm stable. So what you're going to do is you're going to run your voice coils in series. So to show you here, I'm going to use a yellow wire to make it easier for you guys to see. I'm going to hook up the yellow wire up to positive on this side, pick whatever side you want, it doesn't matter, and then I'm going to hook up the other one, other end of it, to the negative. And then on my pair of wires, one end is going to go into the negative, 
and the other end will go into the positive. Now you're wired up in series. Let's show you a test. It's around 7 ohms. I also want to mention today's example was done with a dual voice coil sub that is rated at 4 ohms each. So if you were working with a subwoofer that was rated at 2 ohms for each voice coil, then our numbers are going to change. Keep that in mind. Also keep in mind, you can also buy amplifiers that are 1 ohm stable. So it's better to buy a subwoofer that's a dual voice coil that is rated at 2 ohms each if you want to get down to 1 ohm. Or you could run two of these subs in parallel and at 2 ohms and then step it and then you can run it down and run it parallel again and get down to 1 ohm. But that'll be for another day, guys.